Well, for Ty Lue, uh, I want to say it's a sigh of relief, but the relief will only last a couple of days, really a day before he finds out who he's <clears> facing <throat> next. I, he has not, Brennan, gotten enough credit because of the difficulty of really coaching two totally different teams. The fact that regardless of what happens, because LeBron is there, you're just seen as the guy who happens to be on the bench on the team LeBron already runs. So you're only going to get blame. You never get any credit. Not an easy spot, and I don't think he gets enough credit for how much class he handles that with. Tyloo definitely doesn't get enough credit, and he is in a tough spot. A lot of times he gets treated by the media and by other people and by fans and by uh different people of that, of that nature as a substitute teacher. They act like he can't coach the game. Right. He has a thankless position. When you coach LeBron James, when you win, you're supposed to win because you have the best player. When you lose, it's your fault because you're not doing something right. You're not coaching the guys. You're not calling the best set. So he has a thankless job, but I want to just say that Ty, I, as a guy that played for Tyrone Lue and played with Tyrone Lue, he has an excellent basketball mind. He's a great basketball coach. He had a chance to learn under Doc Rivers, and a lot of the things he does from a defense and offensive standpoint, schematically, he got from Doc Rivers. So he learned from one of the best. He has a lot of impact on the game. He does help LeBron James out there, and I think he's the perfect coach from LeBron James from a, pers from a uh, per personal standpoint. I think Brendan said it exactly the way it is because we hear about Brad Stevens, what a great coach Brad Stevens is. Each year they win more games than the next. You know, this year they got to where they weren't supposed to be. Sure. But as he said, when you coach a LeBron James, it's almost a thankless job yeah. because you're supposed to win. You have LeBron on your team. It's not that easy, okay? It's not the managing of LeBron. It's the total package that you have to manage with LeBron being the leader of this team and the things that he does and fitting things in so that he can do his thing, take advantage of his great talents, let the other people flourish. 87-79, the final. You knew in a game seven it would be tight and not high scoring. It was exactly that, but 35 of the 87 points coming from LeBron James, who was brilliant, one assist shy of a triple-double. We thought maybe, and it would have been, and it will be at some point, whether he wins the championship or not, there will be a last game of the season for LeBron at some point, where we will come on the air and discuss what everybody's been waiting to discuss. But that gets put to bed, and now we think about LeBron and this team coach in the finals. What kind of a chance do the Cavaliers have and how much can LeBron really have left physically for a finals run? Well, I'll assume that Kevin Love will come back, so they'll get another body, another inside guy, another post-up guy, another three-point shooter, mm -hmm. a rebound the form, which will be very important. Mm -hmm. And then it's not like, depending on who's there for the Western Conference, if one team is there, they're very familiar with that one team. If the other team's there, it's a whole new style of play that they have to get used to with isolation after isolation after isolation and deciding how they want to play hard and how they want to play Chris Paul if he comes back from his injury. Uh, both, you know, obviously uh, potentially high-scoring teams, yet the other night their final score was 95-92 when Houston wound up coming back and winning that game. So all I know is it's nice to be there and have a chance okay, to win a championship. And then you go from there and piece it together and they'll get a little bit of rest, not a whole lot of rest, but a little bit of rest. And then they're back at it again to try and win a world championship. Brendan, uh, we got a game seven where, who knows, you got the Warriors more vulnerable than we've seen them in the past. And you've got the Rockets where we don't really know. And I talked to Mike D'Antoni, we played it earlier. We don't know necessarily what Chris Paul's going to be like. They might wait till game time. Let me give you no Chris Paul because he's got a hamstring injury and we're not sure. How do you see the Cavaliers stack up if they play Houston team? What kind of chance do they have if they play Golden State? Well, it's all about uh, who they – it's all about the styles and it's all about who they play. If they play the Golden State Warriors, um, Iggy, no Iggy, that's going to be a tough series for the Cavaliers because we saw this uh, Golden State Warriors team last year beat them in five games. And they with, had Kyrie. With Kyrie. Yeah. So I think it would be a tough matchup. I think that might be a matchup where it could be a sweep or it could be another five-game series, the gentleman's sweep, as they like to call it. But if the other team makes it, if Houston makes it, now that's a little something different, especially Houston with no Chris Paul because we've seen James Harden melt in a lot of big-time moments. He, he hasn't been great down the stretch of this series. So I think if you're the Cavaliers or if you're a Cavaliers fan, tomorrow you sit in front of your television – and you root, you root your heart out for the, for the Houston Rockets because that is a better matchup. 
That is a matchup where LeBron James, I think, has an advantage, a clear advantage yes. in that series. I don't think anybody can guard them. They don't have as much length as the Golden State Warriors, and they don't have that big three or that big four that Golden State has. So I think if Houston gets in the, into the NBA Finals, the Cleveland Cavaliers has a, have an excellent chance to beat them, especially with the way LeBron James is playing. This is the best version we've ever seen of himself. He's answered every question offensively we've asked about his game. Wanted him to go post up more? He's doing that. Find a mid-range game. He's doing that. Clutch free throws down the stretch of this game. And let's not, let's not forget about the three-point percentage that he's had go, go up this year also. So from an offensive standpoint, he's the best version of himself. If they play Houston, I think they can get him, especially with Chris Paul Hurt. There was a lot of conversation and chatter the last couple of days about, and it's a different team, but we always do this, right? Remember, and I'm not comparing the two players, but when John Wall was out, right, and the Wizards went 10-3, and three, and everybody said, well, they're better. No, they're not. Yeah. Everybody was saying, well, you know, Kevin Love. And look, it's a different look offensively and defensively certainly is better. But this team's going to need Kevin Love, coach, and a really good offensive Kevin Love if they have a chance, right, to beat either of these two teams in the West. Uh, correct. Uh, however, having said that, you also have to remember you have to defend both of these other teams, that whoever it is that comes out sure. of here. So, sure, sure. Uh, I, I think what we saw tonight without Kevin Love, and I'm not suggesting that, you know, they're a better team sure. without Kevin Love. But I'm saying with the adjustments that they made tonight, they wind up holding Boston in Boston to this type of score, uh, an incredible defensive performance in the second half for the Cavaliers to really shut them down. So Kevin Love gives you a lot of pluses. There are some things that Jeff Green gives you that's a little bit better than Kevin Love at the defensive end of the floor. And, and also to piggyback on what Coach is saying as far as Kevin Love defensively, We've watched Houston in this series try to pick on Steph, and they've consistently tried to get in screen and roll situations so Steph can switch on to Harden, switch on to Chris Paul, and they can isolate him. You go into the NBA Finals, if Houston is able to win at home, Kevin Love becomes this series Steph Curry as far as from a defensive standpoint. Houston is going to try to target Kevin Love and put him in every screen and roll and get him matched up on James Harden and see if he can move his feet. So there might be some advantages to having Jeff Green out there. Ty Lewis had to go away from Kevin Love in the NBA Finals before. How key are these few days for LeBron? Because th this guy has been, look, I mean, you know, he was laying down while they're accepting the trophy, getting some rest. He, 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 he had, been, who had to do a lot of heavy I, lifting. I, right? mean, the guy I was tired. I'll tell you something, but I'm, naturally, right? And we saw, look, James Harden was, looked tired yesterday. I mean, this is Kevin Durant has looked tired. We're late in the season where these guys are playing a lot of minutes. How key are these next couple of days? Well, they LeBron? put the hyperbolic chamber on the plane. So he is in, <laughs> he's in the chamber flying back to Cleveland tonight. Uh, he will get... Uh, I would say two days of complete rest. Uh, the coaches will, you know, uh, assimilate their game plan against whoever the winning team is tomorrow night. Right now, they don't know who's going to win. So I'm sure they have already covered both teams and have all the plays set, all the videos set, regardless of which team comes out of it. And then they put their game plan preparation. I mean, they couldn't think too far ahead because they had their hands full just trying to get out of this series. But now that they're out of it, full steam ahead and putting the plan together. Yeah, somebody tweeted yesterday after LeBron went knocked down, got right back up and scored 12 points. Don't worry. He's made of adamantium, which is the stuff <laughs> that the Wolverine has. They clearly might be made of vibranium. nerd down in the end. Hey, oh. He might be made of vibranium. Yeah, he never frees. Hey. Uh, we, uh, forever. We're waiting to hear from LeBron, uh, who eventually will, will make his way out and talk to the media. Uh, will not have to answer the questions that he did not want to have to answer tonight, because clearly it would have been a focus about what is moving forward for him. Now we sit there and we get a chance to look at what it was like. The pretty pictures of LeBron closing out the series against the Celtics <laughs> and taking a little bit of a rest. Get up, King. We'll hear from him next. 